Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.
treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed to, into their own country by another way. And when they had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph, in Egypt, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel. For he is dead, which sought the young child's life. And he arose, and took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Now two carols will be sung by our choir, O Calm Ye, All Ye Faithful, and O Christmas Tree.
the subject of today's talk is Jesus Christ, the light of the world. <clears throat> First, let me recount why we celebrate Christmas service or the birthday of Lord Jesus Christ. There are several reasons. Two of them are very prominent and that may be useful for those who are not much into spirituality, religion, even Christianity. For them it will be very useful. And also why we need to worship God in an incarnation and in a human being. That also is very important to know. So the point is this, for us, the worshipping of the Jesus Christ is this, that Sri Ramakrishna, in whose name this power is established by Swami Vivekananda, had a vision of Jesus Christ. The story is like this, that he lived in a temple on the northern part of Calcutta called Bhakshineshwar. And nearby, there was a garden house of a devotee named Shambhu Charan Mallik. And in those days, because of the Christian influence, Western influence, people used to, well to do people used to <coughs> learn or used to uh, familiar or used to be familiar about the Christianity and definitely life of Jesus Christ. So in that way, in that garden house, there was a reading from the Bible, the birth story of Jesus Christ. Before that, Sri Ramakrishna did not have much exposure to Christianity. There is no reason for him because he was a Hindu priest. So there is no reason for him to know about Christianity or Jesus Christ. But it is recorded that he had the opportunity of seeing a service in a Wesleyan Methodist, Methodist church in central Calcutta just out of curiosity. So one day he was coming from Calcutta and his devotee, Mukhrana Vishwas, was with him and he saw inside the church something is going on. So from the door, that means he did not enter inside and probably Mukhrana also did not want him to go inside, uh, uh, want him to go inside, in, inside because he was a Hindu priest and going into a Christian church probably will pollute him, that was probably his apprehension. So he stood outside and saw that. but. There is no record that he was, he had any impression about that. Now at Sambucharan Mallik's house where the reading was done, Sri Ramakrishna learned about Jesus Christ very deeply. And for three days actually he was thinking about that. And again there was another place near, it is just ad adjacent to uh, Dakshinaswar Kali Temple, Jodhu Mallik's garden house. And there he saw the a one painting of Madonna and the child. And then actually it so he was so concerned because he was thinking for some time about Jesus Christ. And when he saw that, he saw that some light is coming out of that. Mm. And in that way, he had a little, what a deep impression about Jesus Christ. Afterwards, he came to the Kali temple. And in the Kali temple, there was an extensive garden. And he was pacing up and down in the garden. And at that time, and he had a, an experience of vision of Jesus Christ. From a distance, he saw the image. One, he could not recognize. That means an image of a person whom he could not recognize. Because the features were quite, quite unknown to him. So that person slowly, slowly came to him. And then he came in front of him. Sri Ramakrishna could recognize, oh, oh, he was thinking about him and he has come. And in that way he, cri he cried out, oh, Jesus Christ, in that way he cried out. And ultimately that image entered into him as the story goes. So the, it is like this that he said, Jesus the Christ, the great yogi, the loving son of God, one with father, one who gave his heart's blood, and put up with endless tortures in order to deliver man from sorrow and misery. And ultimately, he uttered these words. Then ultimately, that image entered into his body. The point is this, this actually, those who do not believe Jesus Christ as a spiritual person, or do not like to believe, that is the best word of putting it. So, 
for them it might appear or it can uh, this story may give an impression that yes the existence of jesus christ was there and not only that he was an incarnation of god because the in entering into the body of a person signifies that they are equal in that way also we say jesus uh, sri ramakrishna is also an incarnation of god of course there are other reasons also but one of the reasons is like this that means they are equal so in that way the great respect that is given is really uh, uh, that is that is very important to know now there are other reasons also sri ramakrishna has some visitors who are christians and they were led by sri ramakrishna to christian path also one of them was williams he was a protestant uh, seeker and he came to sri ramakrishna after learning from somewhere and paid respect to him and they had conversations it is said that sri ramakrishna sat on the floor and he also sat on the floor just it what is called in two uh, carpets and in that way they had conversation and during the conversation he had the feeling williams later on said he actually went to the he was a seeker and he was doing spiritual practices for a long time so he was in the western race that means he changed his religion and accepted uh, christianity as his own so he uh, his dress was western dress and then he sam was asked him to go to the kali temple and it is said that when he bowed down to the kali temple he had a vision instead of kali lord jesus christ so it is recorded in that way then he came back and later on while the conversations ended and when others met him they said that he actually considers sram krishna as a just like jesus christ that he saw jesus christ in sram krishna so he was a seeker and in that way that uh, impression was with him and later on he went away and practiced spirituality and the rest of the life actually he was a, a, a seeker then there was another person his name was prabhudal mishra mishra as you know is a brahmin title and he took to monastic vows or to christianity and monastic vows after a serious accident that happened in his family it was a marriage day of one of his brothers and in that marriage day the, the tent under which the marriage was celebrated marriage celebration was was being was being conducted caught fire and in that fire actually he he lost his brother he lost his brother who was getting married and also another brother who was there in that way, two brothers uh, died in that accident mm-hmm. and that hurt him very much and he renounced and took to the uh, he practiced quakerism and in that way he traveled and when he came to know about sram krishna at that time sri ramakrishna was sick and was in shampur in calcutta for treatment and there he came and met him and told all these stories and sri ramakrishna sympathetically heard him and later on he advised him to take to to take to monastic vows and spend the rest of his life in spiritual practices so in that way he said that today he his remark was that well today i saw the one on whom i have meditated for so many years i saw lord jesus in him so that was his impression that he had that is being recorded so these are the examples uh, uh, the reasons for which we celebrate or we respect jesus christ or think jesus christ or thinks ram krishna as equal to jesus christ that is why we celebrate uh, jesus christ birthday and it is being celebrated in all our centers especially in belur mot those who have gone there and seen this uh, celebration they are very much impressed that means many people say that that is probably the best service that we have seen about christmas because christmas is a joyous occasion culturally actually it is a festivity so that part is quite evident everywhere but spiritual part is also there and that they have experience in belur mot also there is another incident which is related to this uh, particular day that was in this on this particular day swami vivekananda when he was young his name was narendranath he and other young disciples of sri ramakrishna went to a place called atpur which was the 
uh, home of one of the one other uh, uh, young disciple of Sri Ramakrishna, his name was Baburam. So they had a sort of Christmas time in India in those days was a time of festivity and also picnic especially. So they went to their house because uh, Baburam's mother invited them to spend the holidays there. And it is said that without the knowledge of the day, the uh, Narunga, that means uh, who becomes Swami Vivekananda, inspired them intensely about the necessity of following the life of Jesus Christ, the life of renunciation. So in that way he read from the Bible and inspired them to uh, renounce and they took the vow of renunciation, that means that later on formally they took the vow of monasticism uh, after returning to Calcutta, but they took the vow of uh, monastic life in Artpur. And later on they discovered that that day was the day of Christmas Eve, that means night of 24th December. So in that way you can say the establishment of the Ramakrishna order verbally or from the point of view of uh, what is called bhav was uh, held on, on this occasion. So in that way also it is very important for us. So it is also celebrated in that place called Anthpur, which is now a center there. So they celebrate this occasion also. Now coming to the uh, subject, uh, subject of this talk, that uh, Jesus Christ is the light of the world. You can understand light of the world means, this is a saying of Lord Jesus Christ himself when he was about to be uh, condemned to death, you can say. So before that actually uh, there is a dialogue between uh, what is called the people that were present and in that way he said uh, these words. And the point is that in many other occasions also he has said that he uh, is a uh, son of God or myself and God is one in that way he has said many times. So that shows that he is equal to or he is definitely an incarnation of God. So let us see a, a different occasions that he has said that. Even before that also he had, uh, there was, uh, there was occasions when, uh, when he or there are uh, signs that show that he is an incarnation of God that is also there. So there are such occasions. First is this that an angel and the, uh, and the angel Gabriel came unto Mary and say, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. She was much perplexed. When the angel continued, Mary, do not be afraid. Thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shall bear a son, and shall, and shall call him Jesus. That is a, what is called, before the birth, actually, it was declared, if you call, or it was known that uh, God is coming as a son to Mary. Then there was another occasion. Then at the time of his birth, some shepherds who were keeping night watches over the flocks found an angel appearing before them and said, Do not be afraid. Behold the news to bring you in good news. Before, behold, the news I bring you is good news. This day in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, no other than the Lord Christ. So these are the premonitions that had, uh, that shows that Jesus Christ is an incarnation of God and took birth at, uh, uh, at Mary's place. Then when the child was brought to Jerusalem for purification, Simeon, an upright man, was filled with joy uh, with the Holy Spirit and taking him in his arm, blessed God and said, this is the light which shall give revelation to the Gentiles. So in that way also there are observations that Jesus Christ was an incarnation of God. Then there was also, as you know, uh, when he was uh, in the temple and was, uh, 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 what is called, he was talking to the, uh, uh, took part in the conversations of the learned persons, there also he has said, uh, it was revealed. He himself was, has said uh, in this way that his parents lost him. That means they came to the temple to pay respect. Then when they returned, they found that he was missing. Then they went back after three days 
and for three days actually he was in that temple. So they said, the mother said, when asked by the, by the mother, my son, why has thou treated so, treated us so, that means why you have forsaken us, that means why you, you remain in that temple, did not come back. They thought that probably in the crowd he, 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 he was lost, but when uh, they found that he was not there, then they came back to find, find him out. What reason had you to search for He answered, What reason had you to search for me? Could you not tell that I must needs be in the place which belongs to my father, if in capital? So in this way also he himself started revealing that he, he was an incarnation of God. Now there was baptism. At that time also when he was baptized, John uh, has a conversation with John. That also shows that he was John actually discovered. Discovered means he figured out that he was really greater than him and he was an incarnation of God. The incident is like this. When Jesus came and stood before John at the Jordan to be baptized by him, John would have restrained him. It is I, he said, that ought to be baptized by thee, and dost thou come to me instead? But Jesus answered, Let it be so for the present. It is well that we should thus fulfill all the observances. There is a saying that when God incarnates as a human being, he does not really radically change things. He follows all the rules and regulations, customs and conventions, and he maintains that. And then actually, uh, whatever he had to say, some people actually follow, and ultimately things are changed in the long run. Now let us see, uh, as I told you, that uh, he himself, the greatest uh, evidence or greatest proof that uh, a person who claims to be an incarnation is his own saying. His own sayings in a sense that our, uh, as we did Bhagavad Gita, for us it is not difficult to, uh, what is called, realize or accept even that God incarnates as a human being and we call him Avatara. So Lord Krishna has said in Bhagavad Gita, yes, I have come uh, for the uh, sake of the uh, people to give spirituality or just to destroy the unrighteousness and establish righteousness and religion in that way. So in Bhagavad Gita it is there. But the point is that when these things were said, they are said to a limit, not only limited, probably uh, to a very dear person. That, uh, that is there. In, in Bhagavad Gita is a discourse given to Arjuna, that means one person was there. In the same way we see, we read the Uddhava Bhag Gita, there also he has said in that way. But publicly actually we do not see that he has said uh, that he has an incarnation of God. So people had some misunderstanding, some had good understanding, someone accepted him as an incarnation of God. That was situation during his time. But Jesus Christ actually publicly, that is the, even amongst the enemies actually he declared that. That was the difference between his declaration that I am a, I am a son of uh, God or some uh, man, I am and I am my father of one. So that is the difference. So one of the greatest proofs of an incarnation is his own statement about himself. So in a, a in many places uh, we can find out that evidence. One is this, and now once more Jesus spoke to them, I am the light of the world. He who follows me can never walk in darkness. He will possess the light which is light, whereupon the Pharisees told him, Thou art testifying on thy own behalf, thy testimony is worth nothing. Jesus answered them, my testimony is trustworthy, even when I testify on my own self, on, uh, on my own behalf. I know whence I have come, where I am going. You set yourselves up to judge after your earthly fashion. I do not set myself up to judge anybody. And what if I should judge? My judgment is judgment indeed. It is not I alone. My father who sent me is with me. So in that way he actually impressed upon them. Just so is the prescribed in your law that testimony of two men is trustworthy. Well, one is myself testifying in my own behalf. And my father who sent me testifies in my behalf too. 
Hereupon they said to him, Where is this father of thine? And Jesus answered, You have no knowledge either of me or my father. Had you knowledge of me, you would have knowledge of my father as well. So it is a lengthy statement. That means when he started saying publicly, actually he had to impress them through what is called all these uh, incidents or, or his own experiences. Then of course there are sayings uh, occasionally that we find scattered in the New Testament. I am the door, a man will find salvation if he makes his way in through me. He will come and go at will and find pastures. Then again he has said, none know what the son is except the father. And none knows what the father is except the son. And those to whom it is the son's good pleasure to reveal him. Come to me, all ye that labor and are burdened, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon yourself and learn from me. I am gentle and humble of heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So in this way we see there are several other uh, there are several other uh, saints that are scattered, especially in the book of John, the book of Saint John. We will find that he is claiming, he claimed himself as an incarnation of God. Or uh, that is our word, but son of a God in that way he has said. Now what is the implication? How actually we can profit from an incarnation of God? That Swami Vivekananda has said in this way. Swami Vivekananda, you know, he has given talks. Uh, he has given only one dedicated talk on Jesus Christ and that was in Los Angeles. In 1900, I think on 6th January, he gave a talk, the Christ, the messenger. And that talk is very informative and also educative for us. That means it is said that the hall was full, many people were refused to enter, uh, that, that thing happened occasionally. But definitely when he spoke about Jesus Christ and his views about Jesus Christ actually impresses upon us uh, why actually we need to rely on incarnations for our spiritual life. It is like this, Jesus Christ was God. The personal God became man. He has manifested himself many times in different forms and these alone are what you can worship. This is very important. That means we worship God and he himself has said our concept of God is incomplete. And not only incomplete, it is really uh, what is called, he has said blasphemous. That means we cannot think of God. It is not possible. The way we think that is absolutely wrong. So if we want to think of God, actually we have to think of the sons of God. That means incarnations of God. That is the samambaram of his saying. God in his absolute nature is not to be worshipped. Worshipping such a God would be nonsense. We have to worship Jesus Christ, the human manifestation as God. You cannot worship anything higher than the manifestation of God. The sooner you give up the worship of God separate from Christ, the better for you. Think of Jehovah. You manufacture and of the beautiful Christ. Jehovah's picture that we find in the Old Testament elsewhere, it is God's one name as it is said according to Judaism. It is really very difficult to think God in that way. Suppose that the, all the things that are happening, today Mount Etna is uh, what is called blowing up, yesterday it was Krakatoa, then we had what is called this type of calamities, all, all, all are going on. I think these are acts of providence, that means God is playing and destroying us all. That means he is in the uh, uh, form of destruction. So that is not the way we should worship God. That is the point. Though that may be an act of God, but when we worship God, we have to worship him just like a human being. That is the point. So he is saying, think of the Jehovah you manufacture and of the beautiful Christ. Any time you attempt to make a God beyond Christ, you murder the whole thing. God alone can worship God. 
that is also very important. You have to be a god to worship God. That means equal. You can worship a man because you are a man. So in that way, God alone can be worshipped by God. It is not given to man or any attempt to worship him beyond his ordinary manifestations will be dangerous to mankind. Keep close to Christ if you want. If you want salvation, he is higher than any God you can imagine. If you think that Christ was a man, do not worship him. But as soon as you can realize that he is God, worship him. Those who say he was a man and then worship him commit blasphemy. There is no half house for you. You must take the whole strength of it. He, ha he that hath seen the Son hath seen the Father. And without seeing the Son, you cannot see the Father. It would be only tall talk and frothy philosophy and dreams and speculations. But if you want to have a hold on spiritual life, cling close to God as manifest in Christ. This is a very important statement, uh, in, 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 in important observation for all of us. You, you try to meditate or think of God, but thinking of God the way we think, actually all the impressions that we have our mind actually impose on that. So that actually doesn't fit into exact uh, what is called manifestation of God. So for God to, uh, to, to, to think of God actually, we have to think of God as a human being. That is the most important part. And these human beings are the incarnations of, of God. So naturally, uh, the point is that, that when Jesus Christ came and declared that uh, through me actually we will be able to see God, that is the way that we should follow. And that has been said by all the incarnations that has come. There was, there is of course one uh, caveat in that, that uh, Swami Vivekananda had a uh, fancy. He said that Buddha actually came as a Christ. So that person, that that also is important or interesting to know. He says, "It is my particular fancy that the same Buddha became Christ. Buddha prophesied, I will come again in 500 years, and Christ came here in 500 years. These are the two lights of the whole human nature. Two men have been produced, Buddha and Christ. These are the two giants, huge, gigantic personalities, two gods." Between them, they divide the whole world. You know, that means if you think the, the, the practice of religion, half of them are Buddhist, half of them are Christian, and the rest, or you can say, that means at least one third, one third, and then the rest actually other religion. In that way, actually, still the influence of these two giants are continuing. It will be very hard to produce more like them, but I hope there will be. Muhammad came 500 years after, 500 years after came Luther with his Protestant way. And this is 500 years after that again. It is a great thing in a few thousand years to produce two such men as Jesus and Buddha. Are not two such enough? Christ and Buddha were gods, the others were prophets. Study the life of these two and these manifestations of power in them, calm and non-resisting poor beggars, owing, owning nothing, without a cent in their pockets, despised all their lives, called heretic and fool, and think of the immense spiritual power they have wielded over humanity. So the, the observations that actually is important for us, and if we remember them, and then worship God in the incarnations of God, like Jesus Christ, then Lord Buddha, Buddha actually never claimed that he is an incarnation of God. So there is a conversation that is recorded in, in, the, in the literature that some people asked him, are you a God? He said no. Then he said, are you a Yaksha? That means something like a, a supernatural creature. No. Are you a human being? No. So in that way he was negated and ultimately they asked, what are you? I am Buddha. That means I am awakened. That was his, what is called, observation about himself. So whatever it may be, that means these great personalities are really always uh, uh, a beacon light for us for 
our spiritual life. Thank you. 
we are having winter recess after our service, but during the recess there will be several activities. So I would like to inform you then. We shall be celebrating the birthday of Holy Mother Sarada Devi on Saturday, December 29 at 10.30 a.m. with a program of meditation, worship, devotional singing and prasad lunch. That is on actual birthday is on Friday, but Saturday is good for us because devotees can come. So we shall celebrate on Saturday, December 29 at 10.30 a.m. Uh, Holy Mother's birthday. Then we shall have New Year's Eve. Every year we celebrate that at from 10 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. There will be a variety program of meditation, a DVD show and Vesper service. With a Vesper service, we welcome New Year. Then on 2nd, that means we shall go to San Francisco and you are welcome to attend a celebration in San Francisco Center on 1st January, which is this, they are celebrating Sri Ramakrishna's birthday, as a Holy Mother's birthday called Boduru Day, and of course 1st January together, that they do for some time every year. So we shall go and participate that. And from there we shall bring one Swami will be a guest speaker in their function. His name is Swami Atmo Rupanando. So he will be coming here uh, uh, with us on 1st January and he will give a talk. And uh, the title of the talk is 1893, a second American revolution. The talk is on Wednesday, January 2nd at 7.30 p.m. He could not stay for a long time and he, want, he needed to go back. So that is the day that was open. So though it is recess, I request you all to come to listen to this talk. It's an interesting talk and the Swami is a very good, a very learned person and good speaker also. Then after during, we shall open on 6th January, that uh, Sunday, the first service of the New Year will be on January 6th. And this, the subject of talk will be serenity of mind and the talk will be given by Swami Ishodhananandu. And the same day in the evening we shall celebrate the birthday of Swami Shivananda who was the second president of our order. So that will be on January 2nd Sunday at 7.30 p.m. with meditation, simple worship, devotional singing and light prasad refreshments. So we have some activities during this uh, recess and they are all announced in our bulletin also, January uh, bulletin as well as in the, uh, together that means in December and January bulletin we will find all these details. Tayote Madhok Sharanti Sindhava Madhi Irno Santo Shadi Madhu Nakto Mutoshasi Madhumat Parti Gogam Rajaha Madhu Doras Puna Pita Maduma Navanaspati Madhumagangas to Surjaha Madhir Gabo Bhavantuna O Madhu 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 Sweet by the winds and oceans give forth blessedness. May the herbs and plants bring us health and happiness. Sweet and was with the nights and dawns. May every particle of Mother Earth be charged with blessings. May the heavens shower us with benediction. Sweet and was with the noble forest trees. Sweet and was with the shining sun. Sweet unto us be the all living creation. Om, sweetness, harmony, peace. <laughs> 